What's the deal, YouTube? I'm D. Ellis. Welcome back to another episode of Crime Circuit. For this video, we're going to be speaking on the unsolved murder of Blair Adams. Um, he is a Surrey, British Columbia, Canada resident um, who died in 1996 in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, condolences to the family. Make sure you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe. With all that being said, let's get into the intro. Robert Dennis Blair Adams, born December 28th in 1964, was a Canadian man found murdered under a parking lot. Robert Dennis Blair Adams, born December 28th, 1964, was a Canadian man found murdered in a parking lot of an under construction hotel off Interstate 40 outside Knoxville, Tennessee. His murder remains unsolved. On July 5th of 1996, Blair Adams, a resident of Surrey, British Columbia, Canada, withdrew most of his money from his bank account and emptied his safe deposit box full of cash, jewelry, gold, and platinum. He then attempted to enter the United States via ferry from Victoria, British Columbia to Seattle, Washington. Immigration officials flagged Adams as a possible drug carrier due to the large amount of cash he had with him. Once he was found to have convictions on drug and assault charges, he would be denied entry to the United States. In the early morning hours of July 9th, Adams was discovered by Canadian Border Patrol officers attempting to cross the border on foot at the Pacific High border crossing. Officials noted Adams had scratches covering his legs and hands. Adams matched the description of a man implicated in an automobile theft, and the vehicle had been discovered abandoned near the Pacific Highway border crossing. However, he denied involvement and was freed on lack of evidence. Adams managed to enter the U.S. by car on July 10th via a Nissan Altima he would rent from the Vancouver International Airport. He arrived in Seattle where he would purchase a round trip ticket to Frankfurt, Germany. At the Seattle Tacoma International Airport, Adams had previously worked on a project in Frankfurt for his stepfather's con construction company. He had also dated a German woman in Frankfurt, though she later told law enforcement he had never contacted her about visiting. However, Adams subsequently forewent the flight to Frankfurt and instead traded his credit for a one-way ticket to Washington, D.C. Upon arriving, he rented a Toyota Camry at Dooley's Airport around 6.45 a.m. Later that morning, on U.S. Route 250 in Troy, Virginia, Adams backed his car into another motorist's vehicle, causing minor damage. The driver of the car told detectives that Adams seemed nice, but was in a hurry. Adams arrived in Knoxville, Tennessee sometime on the evening of July 10th, approximately 500 miles southwest of Washington, D.C. The first reported sighting of Adams in Knoxville occurred at a gas station, um, Pacific, specifically Strawberry Plains Pike at 5.30 p.m. Now, Gerald Sapp, an interstate repair service driver, had been called to the gas station. Adams told the clerk, the clerk working there, that he was having dif difficulty with his car key and was, and was unable to enter the vehicle. When Sapp arrived, he realized that the key Adams had attempted to use was that of a Nissan, the vehicle that he abandoned in Seattle. Know the Toyota he was driving, Sapp recalled. I asked him to look in his pockets. I said, if you drove this thing up here, you got to have another key in your pockets. And he wouldn't look. Upon his arrival at the Fairfield Inn, Adams was captured on closed circuit television footage in the hotel lobby. He spent around 40 minutes loitering at the hotel before purchasing a room for a hundred bucks. When the hotel clerk attempted to return his change, Adams exited the lobby and walked outside. It was later determined 
he would never enter the room that he had purchased to stay at. Adams was discovered by a construction worker around 7.30 a.m. on July 11th of 1996 in a parking lot of an under-construction Fairfield Inn location outside Knoxville at the Strawberry Plains Pike I-40 interchange, half naked, with his pants off and shirt open. His pants, shoes, and socks were laying near his body. Scattered around his body was German, Canadian, and U.S. currency, totaling nearly $4,000. In addition to the money found with the body, police also located a black duffel bag which contained maps and travel receipts and a fanny pack, which held five ounces of gold bars, gold and platinum, coins, jewelry, keys, and a pair of sunglasses as well. According to an autopsy report by the University of Tennessee Medical Center, Adams has sustained many cuts and abrasions. The Knox County Sheriff's Department has speculated some of the wounds came from fending off an attack. Adams also suffered a violent blow that ruptured his stomach. His official cause of death was ruled as septus stemming from an abdominal perforation. He also had a wound to his forehead, which police determined that was caused by a crowbar or a club. Other injuries indicated that Adams had been sexually assaulted. Law enforcement initially suggested that the possibility that Adams' death had been sex-related since he was almost entirely nude when discovered, when only physical DNA evidence found at the scene was one strand of long hair that gripped on Adams' hand. According to subsequent interviews with his mother, Adams had been acting oddly in the weeks prior to leaving Canada. Though she and Adams refused to tell her what was bothering him, according to his friends and family, Adams had been sober for two years at the time of his death and had recently stopped attending alcohol anonymous meetings or AA meetings. He also allegedly told friends that someone was trying to kill him and confided in his mother that someone had been spreading rumors about him. In a 2010 interview with local law enforcement, it was revealed that the Knoxville Police Department had never received a credible tip in Adams' death. Though a com composite sketch of a man was released in the case, the sketch of a man was of a man two women claimed to have witnessed Adams speaking to outside a Crackle Barrel restaurant in Knoxville, Tennessee. All right, y'all. That's going to conclude this episode on Blair Adams. Um, this is Crime Circuit. Um, make sure you guys please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Put this uh, video into the YouTube algorithm. Uh, condolences to the family, of course. Um... They never got closure at all, but, I mean, hopefully someday they do. Like I said, man, you got to be careful out there. Um, you got to watch everybody, man. You can't really trust people. Um, it's a cold world out here. So you got you to gotta stay safe. And you got to be willing to protect yourself at all times. Um... It's pretty much likely that I feel like it was somebody that he possibly have known. Um, but it's just crazy because, like, he had all the cash, jewelry, gold, platinum, and all that stuff. It's just, I don't know. That That's, it's either like he owes somebody or he was, had all his stuff and was running from something. But, hey, I'm D. Ellis. This is Crime Circuit. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.